when we're trying to learn the bones of the hand, and especially the wrist, we could stare at this for five minutes and not really understand it. Or we could try drawing and learn it really well. So here's the capitate. I'm in the center, palm side up. So we just make a quick sketch of the capitate, big blocky bone. There it is, right in the center of the palm. So I'm going to say C for capitate. Right next to it is a bone that has a hook. So I think of hamate has a hook. H for hook, H for hamate. And you can feel this a little bit when you push down on your your hand, uh, that part of the wrist. Then we have the pisiform, which is a P-shaped bone right there, nice and round. And under the pisiform is a bone called the triquatrum. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. There it is, triquatrum. Okay, so going over this capitate C for center, hamate with a hook, H for hook, pisiform, the little P, and triquatrum, the one that's hard to say. Underneath these is the lunate, which is shaped like the moon. So that's its name, lunate, la luna. There it is, crescent moon shaped, right at the base. So if you're wondering, what is he talking about? Okay, there's the capitate. There's the hook of the hamate. There's a little P-like pisiform underneath the triquatrum. And there's the lunate, la luna. It doesn't look too much like a crescent moon from this view, but in real life it does. Okay. Wrapping around on the thumb side is this huge bone called the scaphoid. And it is kind of S-shaped, so I think of S for scaphoid. And if you look at the scaphoid, it wraps all the way around. And it's in a vulnerable position because here it is. Okay, here's the scaphoid. There's the thumb. When we fall, we're running fast. The radius, uh, the forearm bone is going to crash right into the neck of the scaphoid and so when someone says hey I broke my wrist it's often going to happen right here on the neck of the scaphoid alright so here's the thumb just so we have some orientation it's good to know okay where is he at he's at the thumb right now so on the thumb side the bone right below the thumb rhymes a thumb and that is the trapezium yeah trapezium under the thumb okay little bone there and there it is here you can see there's a thumb there's a trapezium scaphoid okay you may be lost at this point but hey don't worry because the drawing of this uh, especially if you guys are drawing along right now your brain is very active when you draw like tracing doesn't work as well staring at a picture no but drawing is very powerful okay above these we have the metacarpals which are the fingers now, I'm not going to draw them all I'm sorry, it's the main part of the hand, the metacarpals, there's the word. And now the fingers. We call these phalanges, that's a technical name. Now I know you might think uh, this does not look like a finger, but um, it's kind of fun. And again, my brain is very active, and I'm developing a memory for these bones. So distal, proximal. Sometimes it helps to add a little color. And so uh, if you experiment with colors you can say okay well <clears throat> I want to remember this form and so I'm going to color it red this is form and then I think well okay um, I really like the scaphoid because it has a good story because that's one that breaks if we're running and we fall down and our form is going to crash into it it's better if you can roll maybe when you fall I know it's not I mean that's not always desirable either but you break a clavicle but there is the big s-shaped scaphoid and then I say, okay, you know, that one story is kind of interesting about the trap, uh, triquatrum, because it tries, okay, look at the first part of that word, it tries, it tries and tries, but it can never get on top, because that darn pisiform's on top. That's a triquatrum. Then we go on to, ah, the romantic la luna, the lunate, at the base of the wrist, there's the lunate. Okay, so you know, you, you draw these, you say the words over and over, and then by gosh, pretty soon, the hook, hey, there's the hook of the hamate right there. Remember that hamate hook? You can feel that if you push down on your wrist. So that's the hamate with a hook. And the big, massive capitate. You can't miss the capitate right in the center. C for center, C for capitate. Um, it's so big, I can even put the letter capitate. And then look at the poor uh, tri uh, trapezoid. 
it is trapped, truly trapped, between two bones. A little uh, trapezoid. And we have one left. And let's call this the trapezium because it's under the thumb. Okay, trapezium. All right. So those colors will sort of help our, our memory, help us to, uh, when we're uh, thinking back, okay, what, what was the, um, okay, the metacarpals were the hands. And it's one, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to draw them all, but those are the, the top part of the hand. The phalanges were the fingers. And the base of our finger is called proximal. And the tip of our fingers, the technical name is distal. And now for the wrist. Okay, trapezoid is trapped. Trapezium under the thumb. So there's a thumb. Trapezium here. I don't like to cross labels. I should have done this a little differently. There's the trapezoid. We know the scaphoid, right? Big S-shaped bone that breaks when we fall. And of course the C-shaped, um, I mean the huge blocky capitate. It's kind of our landmark right in the center. The romantic lune, la luna. Triquatrum tries and tries, but it can't get on top of the pisiform. And then there's one, only one bone that has a hook, and that is the hamate. And there we have it. We know those bones pretty well now.